So, album of the year does exist. And it is a thing that I have been thinking about all year. Um, it is a thing that I think is very important as a music community to kind of rally around and tell people that like things are good. I think it's important to make sure that, you know, give artists, you know, just tell them that things are good. Like, you know, you know what I mean? They make a good ass product. They should know that they made a good ass product. And I think that's a cool thing that a lot of people do. And I think this year, instead of just posting it on my Instagram and calling it a day, I think instead I'm going to make a video out of it. So before I start on with like the list, I'm going to do like a top five. Um, before I start on the list, um, I'm going to do a couple honorable mentions that I'm just going to talk about really quickly. And uh, then we're going to get on to my top five. First honorable mention is By the Time I Get to Phoenix by NG Reserve. I, I think NG Reserve in general is a very solid musical act. Um, I think this album's weird and I think it has every right to be a little weird and really like melancholic and somber because of Grogs. And I, I think that this is a... Say hi to my cat. And I think this album is a great showcase of doing something experimental while also doing something that's extremely emotional as well. I think that too many artists pass up the opportunity to be like raw and emotional while also being weird and experimental. I think uh, somebody that does that really well is JPEG Mafia. But I think otherwise a lot of like experimental artists generally don't like kind of wallow in their emotions often on um, on a track. So I think that it's really cool that Injury Reserve kind of did a lot of that in this album. It's really raw. I mean, it's still the same injury reserve, but it is interesting to see kind of the dynamic change and kind of see what their thoughts are on every, I don't know, it, it's really interesting. I think I think it's really, really interesting and I think it's a good album. So, you know, you can listen to it. Next one is Born Against by Amigo the Devil. I think this is the best of Amigo's work. I think this is the best he's ever done. It's very poignant. It's comical at times. It's really depressing at other times. It sounds like a folklore story you would hear at like a campfire. And I think it's a really, really good representation of the more folky side of folk punk. Um, I think the storytelling's great. I think it's like short enough that uh, I don't ever get tired of it. And it's not so like but it's not so short that you're like just itching for more it's like the perfect line. it's very very good and i think it does a really great job at illustrating like what folk punk as a genre can do next one is how flowers grow by scowl it's got insane solid like hardcore punk energy it's it's too short for me they it is technically an album by the number of tracks on it but it feels like an ep it's like 15 minutes long it's a really quick breezy listen um, it is like Scowl is a great band I found this year. Um, they're a fantastic band that's kind of on the up and up. They're coming up really well. They just recently did a tour with Comeback Kid. Like they're doing really well. And I really, really like Scowl. So I would recommend please, please, please take the time to listen to this album. It's not that much. It's very solid. I guarantee you their next release will probably be in my top five, honestly. It, they're some of the best things that come out of punk and hardcore in a very very long time fantastic band please take a listen and with all that let's move on to my top five coming in at number five in my top five is snow globe theory by kill bill the rapper what a insanely raw and emotional album this is right after he uh got broken up with their for a very long relationship that he made a lot of mistakes and this is right after he had like a huge character human defining moments uh because he messed up in his relationship and this is his first album back and my god is it a really raw like personal experience it is it is a look at like what he was thinking at his lowest moment thus far you know what i mean like it is it is such a like raw emotional depressing yet hopeful kind of album like depressing because he's at his lowest moment but hopeful because like if i'm at my lowest moment now that means that there's only up for me and that's a cool feeling and i think it's a really cool way to be depressing and acknowledge that things aren't good right now 
while also not like wallowing in it you know what i mean uses some really good samples there's some great melody great beats it flows from track to track very well while kill bill is has some insane flow throughout it there's a song where he raps on it with almost no like bass there's almost no bass in the entire song and it is it is really cool it, it's kind of not i wouldn't say it's experimental like in the terms of injury reserve or jpeg or death grips or clipping but it's experimental in the sense that it's a switch like some of the songs are a bit of a switch up from the normal like kind of jazz hop style that he does just as good as he always has been but even maybe a little bit more introspective than he normally is and a little bit more willing to play around in that space without just being like nihilistic and kind of emo um it is genuinely a fantastic look at like what the consequences of your actions can do to a human being and while you may have gotten yourself there you were it is still depressing it doesn't help anything you know what i mean it is fantastic i it's like a it's it's a pretty short album i would 100 percent recommend listening to it number four goes to volume four numb the ache by victims you guys know i'm a huge 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 victims fan i have a lot of merch from them i love them i gave the one of the last albums i ever gave like a full review to was volume three halfway happy um and i i love volume four it, it's fantastic it's heavy it's depressing it's introspective it's it's got interesting lyrics meredith singing on it was fantastic they uh they did like a full kind of like normal metalcore song on it with like sing like a clean sung uh chorus and i think it's a cool switch up from the normal like victim style of metalcore i think they i think they really killed this like kind of album in terms of like the energy and the vibe i think it has great like energy switch ups it uses a lot of uh trap uh trap instrumentals to like kind of flow from song to song uh meredith has a great uh line on it lyrically I, I think this album is really really good i think it's really fun i think it's a great heavy album uh if you like heavy music i think you'll like this album it's pretty good oh yeah i also think that uh this album is interesting because instead of being depressing and just like kind of sitting in that depression and instead uh, let's the depression feel the anger that you feel within the album. I think I think that's an interesting take on it as well. Kind of like a spite-esque take on uh, depressing things happening to you, which I think is really cool. Coming in at number three is uh, an album called Immoral Compass by Doomscroll. I think Doomscroll is probably the best thing in their album is one of the best things that come out of 2021 at all. A fantastic folk punk band. It's all the sound I love with like a big band folk punk band. Um, it just feels like an adventure album. It feels like you're like on an adventure. It feels like it's describing the story to you. Um, it's got a lot of cool melodies in it that I, I really like. It's really catchy. For a folk punk album, it's actually very catchy. And like, I don't know, I think there's a lot of cool different types of um, folk punk like genreisms. Like, there's a cool gang shout like part of a lot of songs it's got a lot of cool overlapping vocals that i think is not utilized enough in folk punk um and not just like overlapping the lead vocalist but like having every member of the band be part of the vocals i think that's really cool um it's got a lot of cool instrumentals there they have a uh, drum they have actual like drums on some of the songs which is cool um the lyrics are interesting and introspective and at times very political in like songs like rattle brains it is genuinely one of the best folk punk albums i've heard in a very very long time and it's also their first album i mean i know doom scrolls like a kind of a super group but still like it, it is it is their first album together and i think they knocked it out of the fucking park with it i think it's fantastic uh i would recommend you listening to it especially if you haven't heard folk punk before if you haven't heard folk punk this is a great album to jump in on. This is a great album. You'll understand the genre as a whole. I think uh, the only other thing you're missing is a little bit more of the political aspect of it because not all, a lot of their songs aren't political, just a couple of them are. So I think if you pair that with something like, um, something like, uh, I mean, it's cliche, but probably something like Pat the Bunny or Johnny Hobo and the Freight Trains, maybe, um, yeah, probably something like that you know just keep it simple stupid or either that or wingnut wingnut dishwashing any any of pat's projects i think you could pair that with and kind of understand folk punk as a whole pretty well uh but that would be my recommendation uh immoral compass by doom scroll fucking fantastic first album the best folk punk album of the year 
And number two is going to be The Romance of Affliction by CU Space Cowboy. You guys know I'm a huge CU Space Cowboy fan. I drove to a, I drove a state over to go see them. I love this band. And I actually really, really, really like their switch to more of the emo side of Scrams and kind of playing more into their like, they're kind of, because they, they've always danced around the idea of being, of having like emo lyrics and being kind of like emo inspired. Uh, I mean, they play a lot with Wrist Meat Razor, which is basically the, which was basically them, but more emo in a lot of ways. Um, and now I think they finally were comfortable enough to make that full transition into having like really emo inspired choruses and having emo inspired melodies and leads and kind of like certain songs are just like sound like they're straight out of a more chaotic version of an old MCR song like it it is fantastic and I think the story that's that Connie decided to tell within this album is heartbreaking it is deep um I think the lyrics are insanely cool I love the singing on this album I mean shit they got like they got the vocalist from every time I die to feature on this album like oh my god it is it is very good my only complaint with it is that sometimes on a on a repeat listen it can feel like it otherwise though by far their best work I think it's miles better than their last release I think they're they sound more comfortable with the with themselves musically now than they ever have i think connie sounds super comfortable behind this style i think this fits their image a lot i love the mix of like some emo aspects as well as like really heavy hardcore breakdowns i i think honestly i just i think what they did with this album is interesting i think it's slightly experimental and I think it's really, really cool. And I, I would recommend listening to it. It is interesting and I think it has a lot to say for itself. Coming in at number one, my album of the year, I would say it is LP by JPEG Mafia. By God, what a good album that is. I mean, Peggy experiments so much within this album. There's so many different sounds. There's like a, there's like a rap metal song. They have like a lot of interesting samples within it. Uh, within uh, the album, I mean, not just that one song. Like, the, Peggy has some really interesting lyrical delivery, some really interesting lines. Uh, I think, oh God, dude, there's so many good songs. Like, I think my favorites right now are are Dirty, BMT, OG, and uh, Are You Happy. I think I think Are You Happy is po was possibly the moment where I was when I was listening to this album that I thought like this is the best album of the year, hands down. Fucking amazing absolutely think that this is the best peggy album in a while uh i i love peggy and i've liked all of i like a lot of what peggy has released and i think this is the best one we've gotten in a really long time and i think that peggy himself is a fantastic rapper and i think he showcases a lot of his skills on this album in a very very good way I, I think it is also probably one has a lot of like really it has a lot of like unexpectedly catchy parts too i think a lot of parts of the album that you wouldn't expect to be super catchy end up being like really catchy not only that but i think peggy's flow is really good on this album and i think the flow of the album from song to song is also really good it also doesn't feel like it's as long as it is it's it's interesting because I, I just said a minute ago that that um that the affliction the i just said a minute ago that city space cowboys album is too long for me and this album is not that much shorter than than city space cowboys but i think this album feels less long this album doesn't feel like it drones on songs or drags in certain areas i think this album feels because of how experimental it is it is and because of how it's almost experimental within itself like it starts changing it changes so often within itself that it almost feels like you're listening to peggy's like singles all in one album but they all like somehow flow into each other it's so interesting i think lp is definitely my album of the year i think it is one of the best albums that have come out uh, this year especially one of the best albums in rap that have come out this year i think I, I think just hands down lp by jpeg mafia is a must listen to album 
I would highly recommend listening to it. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a weird video to do, considering I was like, oh, I'm gonna move away from music, but uh, I'm working on other stuff. I have like literally five videos lined up right now. I'm just waiting to finish editing all of them, uh, and I'm gonna put them out in incrementally. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think, I hopefully you guys like my next video. It's a little weird for me, but who knows, maybe you will. Um, I'm about to head out. <laughs> Uh, you know how it be. Mom's outside calling. You know how it is. So Mag didn't do dishes. I'm going to head out. Uh, if you want to follow me for more uh, interesting things I just like to talk about, then hit me up. Uh, if you want to see more of me, I sometimes stream on Twitch. Not often, though. So, but yeah, you can follow me on socials uh, if you want to see when like I go live or if I have new stuff coming out. Otherwise, though, yeah, you, you'll figure it out. You'll find it. You're all smart people. I, I know you know there's a big red button on there that says subscribe to let you know when I make stuff. I, I, I figure you're not so dumb that you forgot that exists. See you later, boys.